Hi, my name is Jesse at Trash Panda, and right off the bat, we have to talk about the problem with flight numbers. If you didn't already know, all discs are assigned four different numbers that kind of tell you how the disc is supposed to fly. There's the speed, glide, turn, and fade. And these numbers, of course, are chosen by a committee that's using a combination of aerodynamics, data, and wind tunnels, so there's standardization across the board. Except that's not at all what's happening. Nope. Instead, manufacturers can literally choose whatever numbers they want, and it's entirely subjective. So when it came to choosing the flight numbers for our very first disc, we attempted to apply a little bit more of a scientific approach. And in this video, I wanna show you exactly how. To figure out the flight numbers on the inner core, we employed four separate tests and each one gets progressively more data-driven, scientific, and, well, interesting. So the very first step was simply for me to throw the disc a ton. All of those throws can be found in some of our previous videos, but after thousands of throws, I felt like I was finally getting a grasp of how the disc flew. You know when you first get a disc and it just takes some time to figure out exactly how that one flies? Well, by the middle of October last year, I felt like I knew the inner core better than any disc I've ever had. So at this point, I felt like I was getting a grasp of the flight numbers. The speed seemed to be around a two or a three. I think the jury was still out on the glide and it seemed to be perfectly neutral. But at the end of the day, every disc at least kind of goes to the right or the left. Plus, you're probably already noticing three major issues. First, I threw the disc completely in isolation and never compared it to another disc. Second, I live in Denver, so I'm 5,000 feet above sea level and thus throwing at elevation. And third, I'm only human. As much as I try to throw the disc consistently, every single throw is slightly different in one way or another. So our next three tests were designed specifically to address those three issues. So when I was first throwing the disc by itself, I kept thinking to myself, this really feels like a Latitude 64 Pure, or even this has more glide than I'm typically used to. But naturally, I had to grab some discs to see for myself. So I got an Innova Nova, a Discraft Tour Series Fierce, a Latitude 64 Pure, and an Axiom Proxy. And right now, I just wanna throw all of these along with the inner core so you can judge for yourself. All right, so now that you've seen for yourself, when I first took these out, I thought it was gonna fly exactly like a Pure, but I found it actually flew more like the other discs, especially the Innova Nova with a touch more glide. And one thing I love about this second test is that it really renders elevation moot, kind of, because we're really comparing all the discs in the same environment. That said, there's still two major issues. First, how were the flight numbers chosen for these other discs? I mean, were they thrown at elevation or sea level? Were they thrown by multiple people or one person? Wind tunnels or just someone's opinion? We can't really know. And then there's the biggest problem of them all, and that's the inconsistencies in my form. At the end of the day, I don't have the best form, and that's why we really needed the next two tests. So when it came to the third test, I knew we had to take into account my bias. I mean, I'm not too proud to admit, I'm super close to this disc. After all, we've been designing it at this point for about two years, and I have my own personal opinion of what the flight number should be. So in an attempt to remove my bias, we sent out a survey to you. Well, kind of. We sent it out to the 5,000 people who snagged a first run inner core, and we sent it out early this year, leaving enough time for them to throw it. One of the questions we asked on the survey was, what do you think the flight number should be? 
and the responses from 1,500 individuals were super interesting. I mean, think about it. People were throwing all over the world with all kinds of arm speeds, all kinds of different form issues, not you of course, and all other kinds of variables. So I was stoked to see the results. Now, the question we asked basically said, hey, these are the flight numbers we said, what do you think they should be? So of course, the results are pretty skewed in the direction of what we had said. So when looking at the results, I was mostly interested in seeing the alternative answers. And when it came to speed, glide, and fade, most of the answers were on par with what we had said. In regards to speed, most people thought it should be around a two or a three speed. When it came to glide, most people thought it was a three, four, or five. And when it came to fade, people overwhelmingly still agreed with us, but some honestly even think it had more fade. But in regards to the turn, over 60% of people disagreed. Now, why would that be? It might be because of elevation. It could be because we used a decimal point. I mean, it really could be any number of reasons. In general, people basically thought it either had a minus 0.5 or a minus one turn. But at the end of the day, 16% of people also thought it had no turn. The results, like I said, super interesting. But yes, you're right, there's still one glaring issue. And it's that all of these tests, the first three that is, exhibit one variable that's really problematic, human error. So in the fourth and final test, we had to call in the big guns. If you're enjoying this video and you're interested in behind the scenes content, weekly updates, and even the opportunity to become one of our prototype testers, I wanted to quickly let you know that we just revamped our Patreon and this video is made possible by our Patreon community. If you'd like to join us, it's a great spot, and we'd love to have you. The link is down in the description. All right, back to it. For our fourth and final test, we were lucky enough to partner up with our friends over at Loft Discs to run flight simulations on the inner core using computational fluid dynamics. And side note, if you're a manufacturer or you know a manufacturer, Next time you're looking to assign flight numbers to a disc, you should definitely reach out to and pay Loft to do it. It was an awesome experience. But back to it. Computational fluid dynamics, put simply, is the process of a computer simulating how air flows over an object. So imagine with me for a second, you're in a large open space. So you put in a bunch of code and the 3D model of the object, in this case our disk, and it simulates the disk moving through basically a virtual wind tunnel with tens of millions of data points. In return, you get three results coefficient of drag, coefficient of lift, and the pitching moment. And all of that happens for, get this, one nose angle. Then you have to do it again and again and again and again and so on for like 30 more times, each time generating tens of millions of data points. What about Heiser and Anheuser, you ask? That's a completely separate process. And speed and power and weight it honestly keeps going and I'm still just getting started understanding it. So to make it super simple, the computer basically removes the entire human error element and simulates exactly how the disk would fly in the variables you input. And in the end, the coefficient of drag, of lift, and the pitching moment roughly translate to speed, glide, turn, and fade. So the team at Loft with all of this data and the simulations of the inner core, also compared to their hydrogen putter and a Latitude 64 Pure, finally made a suggestion that we end up with a speed somewhere around two, a glide of three or four, a turn of zero or negative one, and a fade of zero or positive one, all largely depending on the weight of the disc. Thus, their final suggestion, based on the weight of 165 to 170 grams, was two, four, minus one, zero. And my final takeaway is that I'm so grateful to be surrounded by people who are smarter than me. So there it is. When all is said and done after four various tests, all we really learned was how many variables are left in the hands of someone like me. So I know I personally would be totally down for some kind of standardization across the board, and I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. But, it's still in my hands. So along with our team, we decided that the inner core flight numbers are officially two, four, minus 0 0.50.
As always, thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to support the channel, and we'll see you next time. All right. I don't feel like I did a very good job of outroing that video, so I wanted to hop on quickly and just kind of explain why we didn't go with exactly what the CFD analysis provided. Um, Loft at the end of the day had suggested that we go with 2, 4, minus 1, 0, and we went with 2, 4, minus 0 0.50. And the reason is actually pretty simple, and I'm a dingus for not having explained it earlier. And it's just simply that I think the most valuable thing is to take real life experience and compare it with the computer. Um, ultimately, the computer is not taking into place different things like weight and plastic all the way, where ultimately your experience can bring those things into play. So the first three tests, very experiential based. The last test, very just like raw data analysis based. And the reason for the flight numbers we chose at the end of the day is basically the combination of those two things. Um, I hope that explanation helps. I figure since you stayed around this long, you might appreciate it. And at the end of the day, um, yeah, all of that was taken into play. I even threw it at lower elevation. That's something I didn't talk about in the video. And I guess you just can't hit every single note in every single video. I guess that's the reality of YouTube, huh? So if you have any questions that we didn't answer in the video, please leave them in the comments below. I'll definitely address them um, and answer them if I can. All right, I think that does it.